and recording. Okay, well, so what we're going to do quickly is just to show you the, a quick demonstration of the straw technique that we've been using for uh, taking rabies samples and dogs in the Nelson Mandela Bay metro area. Uh, we haven't been using straws as such. What I found works quite well is if we use the tracheal swabs that we use for the garden swab that we use for ostriches. Uh, we just actually use the casing from it, take off the end, take off the stopper from the other end, and there we have quite a, quite a stiff straw that we use. Uh, Length is fine for dogs. If you're going into donkeys or something like that, I've actually tried joining a few and that seems to work. Uh, you can use normal plastic straws that you can get at a catering shop. I give you the milkshake straws. We found these are just a little bit more sturdy so you get a better sample, but you can do that if you don't have anything else. Uh, plastic straws, the paper ones don't work very well. Then what else you'll need is a scalpel blade, scalpel handle, ideally. Uh, just so you don't end up cutting yourself. There can be a little, a few droplets or aerosols, so you do need a, a face mask and ideally glasses. Um, the, the face shield will be ideal. Unfortunately, I see mine in my office broke uh, sometime during the during move. Then I'm also wearing a lab coat, you should wear overalls or something like that that you can take off and disinfect after taking the sample. So then what we do is, here's, here's our, our model donor for the day. What we do is we're going to be cutting down at the where, where the neck muscles meet the muscles from the base of the skull down onto that lambda occipital joint. Uh, if we expose the joint, we, we can then have access to the occipital uh, the foramen magnum. Through the foramen magnum is then when we, where we take our sample. Uh, what, what we do is we use a twisting motion, not, not covering the back of the straw move the straw forward through the foramen magnum towards one of the eyes so that it takes a re representative sample. Uh, once we've got to the, the, the front of the skull, give it a few good turns to make sure that you've separated your sample from the surrounding tissue. You then block the back, form a suction, and pull the sample out. Okay, let's get going. As I say, cut down right at the base of the, the neck and the skull over there. Now, when you get, I've actually already gone through it, usually when you cut down, you can see a, 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 a bit of the, the membrane between the joint. When you pierce that membrane, there's usually a bit of cerebrospinal fluid that runs out. The gap doesn't look that big, but you'll be surprised at the size straw that you can get through that gap. So then from there, place the straw. As I said, twisting motion, I'm going towards the top eye, Twist it, progress it forward. Sometimes you meet a little bit of resistance and you can just push past that, carry on twisting. There we go. Give it a few good turns. Block the back, pull out. That there is then my brain sample that I need. That is all I need. Put it into a small sample bottle. I like to use the swab then just to get it out of my straw. What you can, what we have also been doing is sometimes just flushing it out with the glycerase saline. Straw then finished, use it once off. I have it incinerated with the dogs. Then over here we have our sample. That sample, ideally, we then add a bit of glycerase saline in the fridge. You can keep it for at least a week or two and it still tastes quite fine. If you're not going to be able to ship it soon and don't have glycerase saline, then perhaps you can put it in the freezer like that. Uh, then remove it, either send it on ice or add which I say you before you ship it. Also, once you've sealed the container, these little sample bottles do leak a bit, so make sure that we have to have them triple bagged, so I put them inside a rectal glove that I've tied off, tied at the top at the bottom, and then wedge it into my carrier cooler box that I'm sending it upright with ice packs and newspaper. Okay, thank you. So then just a quick recap. Uh, where the, 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 the neck muscles meet the base of the skull, we do our cut through there. You can almost, you can actually see the muscles change direction, the muscles of the neck to the muscles of the base of the skull. There is that membrane I was talking about, let me try and tear it up a little bit more. So then you go through, um, a bit in front of it, there we go, cut through the membrane, a bit of cerebrospinal fluid runs out. 
and then you've got your gap for access. From there what we do is we push the dog's chin against its chest. That just opens up that gap a bit better for us to get in through the foramen magnum. As I say, with them lying like this, I prefer to go for the top eye because then you're running on a, on a straight plane, but you can, go, you can go for the other as well. As I say, just aim at one of the eyes so that you get a representative sample of the brain and that you're not running between the two hemispheres. Give it, oops, there we go. Give it a good twist once you get to the front to make sure that you separate all the tissue that you're removing. Rock the back, pull it out. There's your sample. Let's see if I can get this one out a bit easier. Sample bottle. As I say, we have flushed them out the back before with glycerosaline, but usually they can slide out quite nicely. And then as far as as far as of your, your straw, your gloves, your scalpel blade, everything safely from there. As I say, take off your protective clothing, put it in some disinfectant. Okay, thank you.